The team is back with another episode of Topical Explainers for the first chapter of CI IGCSE Computer Science. In this video, we'll be discussing all about data storage and compression. To simplify the topic and provide us with all the inf information we need, we have Abdullah here with us. Hello everyone, we'll be continuing our chapter one now with going into the fourth topic of the chapter, that is data storage and compression. So let's just deep dive into this chapter without wasting any time. So when computer is storing our data, it is storing it in its memory. And the computer's memory is what we'll be diving into today. So a binary digit is referred to as a bit, as we have referred, as we've studied so time back right now. Four eight bits is a byte, four bit is enabled as we studied. But the thing that matters is the byte is used to measure memory size. And, uh, we will be, after this, uh, there are two methods of measuring the amount of bits. Um, we will be using the ICEB system in the exam that will be used. But we have two methods of converting bits into bytes and then so on ahead. The first method is the ICEB ICEB system, which is the more commonly used system and will be used in the CAIE exams. In this, we take the two powers of two and multiply them by 10. One KB byte, which will be one KB, is two raised to power 10. One MB byte is two raised to power 20. One GB byte is two 30. One TB byte is two 40. And one PB byte is two 50. The thing that you can remember, which I used to do is, two raised to power 10 is one zero two four. So when you're converting from one to another, just keep on dividing one zero two four and keep on going a step ahead. So from bytes to keep uh, KB byte, you just divide the 1024, then to MB byte, you do 1024, and then to GB byte, 1024 again, and then 1024 again, and then 1024 again. But the other system is a conventional system that is just using the powers of 10 to uh, 10. So they go 10 to power 3, 10 to power 5, 10 to power 9, 10 to power 12, and 10 to power 15. So you just keep on dividing them by 1000, a value of 1000, which is 10 raised to power 3. So one kilobyte will be uh, 10 by base to power three bytes, which is like the conventional system. For example, a kilogram has thousand grams, the same way a kilobyte has a thousand bytes. A megabyte will have one th uh, thousand into thousand, which is 10 raised to power six bytes and so on. But we will be using the IECB system. So we just have to keep in mind the 1024 thing more, but we need to have an idea of the conventional system as well. So if this is the right to ask us the difference or something like that. Now, how do we calculate the file size of an object? We have already done that with numbers, with the bits and bytes. Well, we didn't calculate the file size, but we are able to estimate that number would take a byte if it, it will want uh, 256 range, 255, uh, uh, 127 the range, it will take a byte. But now we're going into images. So in images, it is calculated by the image resolution, which we have studied in the previous topic, into the color depth. So the color depth, of course, is telling us how many color uh, bits are required by a color. So multiplying that with the number of pixels, we know that these are the many pixels and each pixel is taking these many co uh, color. Uh, each, each pixel has these many colors using the color that, and that will give us the file size. You can just memorize the formula and use it in the exam. Now going for the sound, you just have to, for a monochromatic sound, you have a sample rate in Hertz into the sample resolution, which we've studied in the previous chapter, into the length of the sample in seconds. But in the serial file, you will, serial file, you will multiply the result by two because two files are recorded at once. But in a mono sound file, one sound is recorded. So this is a simple thing. You have to memorize the formula. The logic for the sound is that a sample rate is how many uh, sample rate is in hertz, which is per second. So if you just put the formula, you will understand that this is multiplying to give you the amount of storage. And now file types, this is the second important part of this chapter, which is now we'll be starting on to the file types of music, file types of images and stuff. And these are the ones that are in the syllabus. Uh, we'll start off with MIDI, which is the storage of music files. And these is this is not a music file itself. You can't just go into a, put it into a phone and play it. It is a, Technically, the communications protocol that allows electronic music instruments to interact with each other. So, for example, if you have a piano and you can store the no, the series of demands, but keep in mind, no actual music notes. So, you should put all of the commands that what the piano has to do 
in the MIDI file and connect your computer to a piano and the piano would uh, do all of those commands. These are used in generating music and this uses 8-bit serial transmission which is asynchronous. Transmission will be dealt in the second chapter. So just keep this point in your mind, although you wouldn't be able to understand it much. But in the next chapter, when we go into it, you'll be able to understand that. And each MIDI command has a sequence of bytes. The first byte is a status byte, and the second byte is the, the status byte is encoded in, uh, in MIDI channel. So simplifying this, the first byte tells us the status of the uh, MID, uh, the MID, MIDI device or what it has to do. For example, it has to go into this section of the uh, of the instrument and uh, perform the specific task. And in the status byte, the MIDI channel, which is 60 different channels. Now, there are many examples of MIDI commands, for example, playing a note on and off, and a key pressure, for example, how loud a music has to be played. So, but the problem with this type of file is it needs a lot of memory storage because a lot of things are being stored in one file. By the way, uh, what do you Going mean by asynchronous in the previous slide? So like asynchronous is a type of uh, transmission, which I don't think would be very suitable if we tell right now. If we are. Oh, okay. Uh, MP3 uses, so this is going to MP3 now. MP3 uses a technology known as audio compression to convert music and other sounds into an MP3 sound file. This MP3 sound file is what we know, in, know uh, to be the communication uh, factor for music. So, this uses a compression, which will be is very important for our topic. If this technique reduces the file size by 90%, this is done using the algorithms which use perceptual music shaping. Perceptual music shaping allows uh, to remove the things in the music which our human ear cannot hear properly. So let's say that our hearing notes are, there are some sounds that are not in our hearing range, those will be removed. And then there are some sounds that are deafened by louder sounds, those are removed. That is clearly removing uh, things from the storage, which clears out the memory. Then we have certain sounds are removed without affecting the quality too much, which is the, which is what we explained. And then CD files are converted using file compression software. When uh, music is uh, uploaded into CDs, they are uploaded after compressing them so that they take less memory. And this the way of uh, compression, which is a perceptual music shaping, this is a lossy format. Lossy format means that the data is being lost, which means that, for example, if I compress the file, the file cannot return to the original form after it has been compressed. While there's another method that is lossless, we'll study it later on. But in that method, the file returns to the original shape. And before is for the videos, it has a series of pictures which has taken alongside the audio and the more the picture are taken, we have a video. Then the sound is calculated the same way as an MP3 and this photos are added on MP4. Now if we head into images and JPEG is the main type of image format which we'll be studying. And JPEG is a file format which once again uses, is used to reduce photographic file sizes. This is also used a uh, compression technology. Mm -hmm. So it reduces the picture, uh, picture resolution by reducing the pixels. One thing to note is that pixel, uh, the picture resolution and the image and the screen resolution are different things. Picture resolution is the amount of the pixels there in an image and the screen resolution is the amount of pixels that are on a screen. So if the screen resolution is higher than the image resolution, you can only see the image as clear as the image resolution is providing you. And in case the image resolution is high, you cannot see the full quality of the image because the, even though the image has more pixels, your screen doesn't have the capability to show all of those pixels. Now, coming on to the coming back onto JPEG, so this reduces the number of pixels per centimeter, reducing the picture quality. And once again, this is a lossy method because you're losing pixels, you're using you're losing colors. But lossy allows a lot higher amount of uh, file size reduction as compared to lo lossless. <coughs> so now, when uh, JPG is able to remove a bitmap image, which is studied by a factor of five and fifteen, and when a file goes undergoes compression, the file size is heavily reduced. 
Now, when dealing with data, what do we do with data is occupying a large amount of space? As we said, that we compress it. Now we'll be going more deeper into the topic of lossy and lossless. So lossless, we've uh, technically discussed the lo lossy methods mostly. Now, so we're now we'll be going to the lossless methods. So in the lossless methods, all the database from the original voice can be reconstructed. So after you get a lossless file, compressed file, you can work on it and get the original file back. Now, for this file, you mostly use those type of files that even if you lose a single amount of data, you have a very big problem. And in this case, that no data is lost, but remember, whenever you're transferring data over the internet, where speed is important, you are trying to save time, this will take a lot of time. So the first type of example is run length encoding. But let's just say, um, I think it will be better if we could explain this on the whiteboard. If we could just go into the whiteboard. So let's just say we have a text that is in a file that is A, 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 B, 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 C, C, D, D, E, F, F, double E, F, F, G, G. <clears throat> now, if we're trying to compress this file, so when we have this four A's, four B's, double C, double D, double E, double F, double G, so sometimes we could use one method that would First of all, store the first four A's. Rather than storing A four times, it will just write four A, saving the memory. Then four B, two C, two D, two E, two F, and two G. Now, in some cases, it is not reducing any memory. So like reducing two C to two, uh, double C to two C, it is using the same amount of memory, two bytes. But in the cases of four, it is reducing the memory usage. So overall, it does have a very impact and reduces the memory size. But let's just say we have H in the end. That would lead to one H at the end. And that is taking more memory than this. In some cases, you don't put one edge, you just write edge, but some cases you write one edge, and that is taking more memory, so that is a problem in this method. Now, going back to the presentation. So, uh, when a repeated string is encoded into this value, as we have said, uh, it will use the ASCII values and the numbers. So, that case, first we took 0, 5, and then nine seven uh, zero five is the five amount of A's, and then nine seven is the A. Zero four is the amount of B's, and ninety eight is the uh, is the ASCII for B and C and D and so on. But this is only effective when there is a long run of repeatedness, as we have discussed. So as we said, like C D C D C D. One more problem is that it cannot do in a groups of two. Like we can do C and D and C and D, but we cannot do C D C D as a group. So that would just take a bit, make it a bigger problem. So uh, we can use a flag to solve this. A flag would take 255 before every liberating value, but once like 255, 05, 97, 255, 04, 98. This is a method, but we'll not be going too much into this method in the IGCS syllabus. So I think you just need to keep that in mind that this is a problem. Now lossy file compression, we already discussed MP3 JPEG. Either original file is impossible to get back because the file quality is reduced because content from the file is reduced. So if you're just trying to forget the concept in the exam, just keep one thing in mind that if it's asking about lossy, we have to find a technique in which the data is lost. And if it's asking about loss, let's try to use RLE, another method which is not reducing the file size. And RLE could also be applied on images and sound, but once again, the sound and the image quality would not be reduced too much. Another problem with uh, RLE, which I forgot to tell, that it needs a specific software to run the file. Because for RLE, the file needs to be compressed on both ends, compressed on one end, decompressed on the other. But for the other formats, it just needs to be compressed on one end and can be run directly at the other because the file size is already reduced. Now, that is it for this chapter. The chapter one will be finished. Chapter one is finished, but now we'll be going to the workout session so that we will just have a quick review about what we've studied. And I would strongly suggest to you that if you have a notebook or something like that, just take it out and try to solve these questions whenever you see it and you pause it. And then we will we'll be answering them and you will also have the marking scheme after them. So we may should be continuing from it. 
and he'll be doing the questions. Sure. So uh, looking at this question, it says state. Uh, it's basically giving us a situation where Gurdeep wants to send a large file to Jennifer over the internet, and it says state two benefits. It's a two-mark question. It's straightforward. Just state two things. No need to explain. So I'll just say that as it says, it's a large file. Compressing it would make it a smaller file to transmit. So that's a benefit. And also, it'll be uh, much faster to upload and send over the internet if it is a smaller file. So that will be the second benefit. Yeah, and after if you go into the market scheme, we have three points in which you can choose two from. So smaller file to transmit, the file is transmitted quicker and really less uh, bandwidth. So these are the three answers. And Vimesh is on to have the first two points. So Vimesh will be getting the full marks out of these. Now for the next question, Vimesh, if you just continue for the next part of the same question. And just to notice, this is the 0478 syllabus that we're dealing with as of right now. Sometimes I'll be letting you know that sometimes we have questions from other syllabuses as well. If there is from one uh, other syllabus, I'll let you know. Okay. So in this question, they're basically comparing lossy and losses, right? So it's saying that what is the most suitable type of compression? And uh, here, for our first situation for B1, we have given download the code for a computer program. I think this is a very, very specific case that is actually repeated in a lot of uh, papers, even A-level papers, actually. So what we know is that this, okay, if it is a code for a pro computer program, right, it has to be important. Every single character in it is important to us. And if we lose any data in it, that will cause issues and the code won't run, okay? So the first, for the first one, if we're downloading the computer for computer uh, code for computer program, right, it's going to be lossless, right? Because it the it's important that the code should be exactly how it is, to its original counterpart, right? Otherwise, it would just not work. Okay, that's what I would say. Uh, or it won't just execute at all because there would be errors in the program. And um. If we talk about B2, it's basically streaming a video file, right? And in this case, it's not necessarily that necessary that you need a very high quality video file. Uh, you can go with the lossy. I would personally go with the lossy uh, option here, which actually does make sense because there's a lot of limitations too on your own display and there are a lot of fine details that you don't notice. So we can mention that, yeah. That like um, it can be reduced and it can be still be like, not noticeable you know and the file size would be much smaller if we actually use lossy that's one of the benefits that we have to also look on to that if it is lossy it will actually decrease the file size much more than lossless so that's a big plus can you check the another other advantage would be the fact another advantage would be the fact that uh, when you're streaming a video file after compressing it will from lossless if you're using a lesser bandwidth and that would allow the live streaming to run smoother because if it's using high bandwidth, then there, there will be a lot of, there can be a lot of lag if the net is not that good. So oh, when yeah, the marking scheme, yeah. once again, issue. Mean, yeah, the buffering issue, that is what causes the problem. And the lossless, once again, your image was on point, your uh, lossless allows the code because it should be exactly the same, even if something is lost, even if something little is lost, the code is not working. And the lossy, you know, you can't use lossless because the file will stream faster and then, uh, then uh, lossless compression and the quality video can be used, but it can still be reviewed. Uh, so that is it. Actually, this is a simple question that I cho uh, chose that we'll be doing the, that we're dealing with the topic. And that is it for this topic. So over to you, Amish. So finally, we're done with the first chapter of IGCSC Computer Science. And thank you all for tuning in. We hope you had a great understanding of the concept. And you can get hold of the notes on the Notes website. And our social media handles are on display. So connect with us. And if you have any kind of questions, just feel free to drop them down. Yeah, and see you in the next upload. Thank you.